What's going on, guys? I appreciate those of you hanging out, waiting for the stream to start. For those of you that are watching the replay, coming to the channel for the first time, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and turn on all notifications so you get notified when we do these live streams. You can take part in this chat. So we're going to talk about some clones today. Uh, jumping on Dedrick's live last night kind of inspired the idea for today's live stream. What are some of the you know, clones that have impressed me the most, you know, across several different brands. Some are clones. Some are more original takes. Uh, not really. They're all clones. Now that I'm looking at the 10 that I picked, they're all clones of something, but they're actually really good, especially for the money. A few of these are pretty new to the collection. Some I've had for a little while, but it's 10 specific ones. Now, it's not the only 10. It's just the 10 that I kind of wanted to spotlight in this particular topic today. So, First and foremost, though, what are we wearing? John Barbados and Nick Jonas, blue, the first one, the original release. I forgot because there was a time. So let me take you back to when I lived in Texas. I went to the John Barbados store in the Galleria Mall when I lived in the Houston area. And this was the only one in the line out at the time. And I remember smelling it and I sprayed it on skin. It's just got this fruitiness, minty green feel. It's a little powdery and sweet. And I was like, wow. Mass appealing, very much a blue fragrance. I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty damn nice. Why is this not getting any more love? And here we are. It's been a few years since it came out. I just noticed I've never taken the plastic off of the tag. It's never gotten any love. And uh, you know, I, I get it because it's I guess technically generic, but it's a very green, sweet, powdery, fresh, mass appealing fragrance. I haven't worn it in quite some time. There we go. Now the tag looks a little bit better. Doesn't have that glare on anymore. Um, this is still really good, though. Now, don't get me wrong. Crimson, the red bottle, or crimson colored bottle, still the best one. Silver is kind of like Coach for Men meets Dior Sauvage. This one's got like a little bit of arrows going with a few other things, but I don't know. I haven't worn it in a really long time. It's been several years. I, I was putting stuff up on the shelf obviously i was pulling caps and smelling stuff as i'm putting them up and it's like you know i need to wear this soon and today was the day so i decided the rocket super super underappreciated john barbados and nick jonas technically blue but it's the self-titled original fragrance in the line before it was a fragrance line when it was just one release so let's see who's wearing what and all that good stuff baltimore big man's in the house What's going on, Nick? Spencer's in the house, fresh out of the shower, rocking the Blanc O Intense. Yeah, we featured that in today's video. Uncle Box, that's an interesting name. I like it. Ishmael, good to see you. Guest Seductive Homme Noir, that's on the shelf. No, it's is it? Did I pull that one? Because there's still a few fragrances I'm missing. I haven't been through every single box just yet. I'm still missing like Guerlain Lome Ideal Intense, like I was talking about the other day. I know it's in one of these. I still have boxes to go through. How are you? Drop those 10 of the days and how y'all smelling today. That's what I'm talking about. And don't forget to hit that like on the way in. We got 85 viewers in the first three minutes and only 37 likes, guys. We can do better than that. Clones are taking over. I don't know about that. I still think the major brands are still number one. But this is more people in the know. Like Dedrick pointed out, There's it's expanding beyond people in the know, enthusiasts in the community that watch content like you guys watching this right now. It's expanding a little bit beyond that, but it's a nice alternative. A lot of the times, anyway. 212 VIP wins. The VIP line clicks with me. I need to spend some more time with that line. I don't really have any experience with it. I don't have any of the VIPs. Smash that like button. Tell them, Sean. What's going on, Dominique? Ethan, rocking Versace Porom. Fresh and clean, indeed. Smash the like button. Soy Daitali. Excellent choice, Adolfo. I'm a rude lunar vetiver. I've never tried that one. I have dark orchid and I have wet stone, which I mean, I'm not wet stone, uh, white hinoki. I have tried wet stone, but white hinoki is phenomenal. That was one I pulled the cap on when I was putting it on the shelf. Jared, what's going on? Be nice. Listen, busy working, but at least I can tune in. Y'all hit the like button as soon as you join. Drop your center day in the chat. Jonathan's in the house. It's you move went good. Ross, your new gym looks awesome. So yeah, that's that's the pit. I start my day in the pit. I sweat my ass off. In there, so there's more to the gym than just that outdoor sweat box warehouse with the old rusted weights and stuff. There's a much larger inside gym, uh, but I, I like I like training in the pit. You want to talk about so it's like training in a sauna. It's hot as shit, no air conditioning, dark. It's old weights. They're they're rusted. 
now the cables and the tracks it like the, the equipment's fully functional they just have that old patina vintage you know late 80s early 90s feel to that type of equipment you know so it's it's badass very hardcore atmosphere pick for rigno Lee Haney, Dorian Yates, Arnold, some of the local competitors that go to this gym, they have big blow up pictures of them. But there's it's that old hardcore atmosphere where they got just old warehouse gym with with bodybuilders all over the place, male and female. It's just it's badass. It's not the same feel as Body Elite was when I was growing up, but kind of about as close as it's gotten since. But I agree, Jonathan. It's a badass gym. Definitely picked her a good gym. Smells good in the chat. Ogivre, excellent. Blue Sapphire from Sammy, that's good stuff. UAE perfume. Yeah, we're about to jump into it. Damn typos. We'll get caught up on the chat and we'll dive into the first. We've got 120 viewers already. Less than half the likes. We only got 54 likes. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, guys. I appreciate all of you. Signature Rose, excellent choice. Dan, not the man, is rocking Profumo. The Roller Portofino, Max. That has been. I got to get my wife a bottle. She's blowing through her dossier clone citrus neroli of neroli portofino she started spraying neroli canvas from our and she started spraying that bottle which i don't want her to blow through my bottle so i'm just going to get her i'm going to spend the money and get her the real deal uh because she has fallen in love with the neroli portofino scent profile so probably towards the end of the month i'm gonna go ahead and get her at least a 50 ml. 50 ml will last her a while. Depends on the pricing I can get for 100 ml, but I'm going to get her a bottle of Tom Ford and Rolly Portofino. Get her the real deal. Getting Evening Mystique in today. Well, I hope you enjoy it, my friend. Hope you enjoy it. It's a little too hot for me to wear that one right now. But as we roll into the fall, it'll definitely get back into my rotation. Center of the day, Trillium, Vince Camuto Solar, excellent. <laughs> Rock Boy T done changed it to this R. Kelly, Mr. T look. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's an interesting uh, avatar, but he's rocking sadly. When Rod Lux Silver, never tried that. Boston Scent Le Parfum, good stuff. I'm off Siage, Colonia, Aqua de Parma Colonia, excellent choice, sir. Virgin Island Water, layered with Molecule 01, interesting layering combo. But another one wearing Versace Parfum, Coach Blue today in the Phoenix Heat, extremely hot. Mandarina Duck Black, I understand the clone thing, but I'm always going original. Look, I prefer the originals too, just like the point I made yesterday, 95, eh, really 99% of the time. The originals got that little something extra that the clone can't seem to capture. So it's always better to go with the original. Rare situations like off 9, 9 p.m. where I'd say get that over ultra male. That's always the perfect example because I genuinely think just get 9 p.m. It's I think it's better. But again, that's my opinion. And with that said, we're at a decent stopping point, decent stopping point. So we'll stay right there. We're, we're not too far behind, but we're going to start with one of my favorites to come out this year from Latafa, Body Out Oud Sublime. Like it got so hot so fast, and I would like to take a little bit of the credit for the hype on this, that every time it restocks now with Fragrance Buy, there's just like with Dior Own Parfum, there's a strict limit, one per order, or they'll cancel your order. That's the kind of hype that's behind this one right now. Uh, Dedrick described it so perfectly that I've been using it was fruit punch with rose. It does smell like fruit punch. It really does. Beautiful plum lychee apple. Just oh, so good. Jasmine and rose. It's very watery. This is so good. It literally, for those of you that saw the live stream, when I did the haul video and did my first impressions on this, it literally stopped me in my tracks, screwed up my train of thought because I was not expecting what I smelled. And it literally like took my breath away. I just think it's so good. It is so, so good. It is definitely leans feminine. It's not for everybody, but guys that like rose, fruity rose, this is phenomenal. And it's a monster performer, absolute beast of a fragrance. So let's go ahead and pull the notes up. We'll do a quick split screen. This is one I would encourage you. If you like rose, go for it. I, I <clears throat> absolutely say go for it. So adjust this screen size to where we do 16 by 9 there we go so so it's actually on parfumo now so here we go fruity synthetic floral and sweet absolutely apple lychee and rose jasmine plum moss patchouli and vanilla so you can see it's very highly rated a lot it's only got seven ratings so far because it has not been on parfumo's website for long i did check to see 
because I also have Aroma Concepts pulled up for some note breakdowns for some of these other ones we're going to be covering because I want to do a split screen so we, you guys can see the note breakdowns on them. But I checked, obviously I checked Parfumo first and they had this one. So I was like, okay, that saved me some hassle of going hunt because at first it was hard to find the actual note breakdown. They have a card that comes with it, but as far as to do a split screen on a live stream, it was hard to find the accurate note breakdown. But now I've heard somebody say shampoo and conditioner as well. And you know what? Sure. There's a little bit of shampoo and conditioner going on here. I get that. Feminine bath products. That's where I say it leans feminine. I understand those that feel that way, but this is one that, again, if you like fruity, rose, heavy fragrances, this is one of the best ones I've smelled. And it's definitely my favorite release from Latafa this year. This is this and one other are hands down my favorite Middle Eastern pickups, which we'll get to that one. It's Pandora Sense, Camaro Almond Tints, the Vintage DR Almond Tints clone, which that's in here. We'll talk about in a little bit. But that's my absolute two favorites that I've picked up this year. So naturally, we have to discuss those. But, guys, it's out of stock right now. I don't know who else has it in stock. If you go to Fragrance Buy's website, click notify me. That way, when it comes back in stock, you can grab it. But Latafa's Body Al Oud Sublime, just a magnificent fragrance. I'm so impressed by this fragrance, as the topic says, the most impressive cheap Middle Eastern fragrances. That, and easily, that one impressed me, I think, the, the most this year. Fragrance Swap. Clones of solid following outside of YouTube. People know nothing about frags. I've met oftentimes have popular clones. Waiting on my bottle of Ocean Sunset Transcendent Parfums. Jeff, Jeff did some good stuff there. Mint Meat Passion to come in. So I only have Flight Mode. Flight Mode's unique. Very unique fragrance. Finally pulled the trigger on a full bottle. Precious Liquid Mandarin. I tried Latafa's Amethyst today and it's Vomit Emojis. I'm surprised to hear that. It's I think it's a great clone of uh, Atomic Rose from Anisio. I'm a big fan of that one. That was one of my favorite Latafas. It was my favorite in the line before this one came out. Now this is my favorite Latafa fragrance and my favorite Body Al Oud flanker, which I'm sure they'll continue that line further. What's going on, Dino? Alpha by Avon. Noted. Don't know what you're trying to reference here, but okay. To me, my favorite is Polo Red Eau de Parfum. I only have two versions. I have that one and the Intense. Um, I procrastinated getting the Extreme for a long time. Now it's kind of difficult. I do have a large decant of the original Polo Red. Uh, it's a little more powdery than you may think. But my favorite is definitely the way the citrus and the ginger come across in the Eau de Parfum. Great performer without being too strong or too weak. It's like the happy medium best version for me. And I have a decan of new Polo Red Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is still better to me because Polo Red Parfum doesn't even smell like Polo Red. It's a good fragrance. Absinthe, iris, stuff like that. It's a good fragrance. It just doesn't smell like Polo Red. They, they put it in the wrong line. It did. Arm off Milestone. Been hitting in this Midwest heat. Citrus Neroli's so good. Clean, fresh clothes and Neroli. Great dupe in the heat. It's like been my wife's go-to. It's what she wears the most. She's about halfway. She's knocked like 20, 25 ml out of that 50 ml bottle. And she, I just gave it to her three weeks ago, maybe. And she's maybe a month. And she's knocked almost half of it out. It's impressive. Bentley Momentum Unbreakable. That's a good green, herbal green and iris fragrance. Hindu Kush. Balls of Steel. Gotta love the name. Paco Rabanne 1 million. The original. Hey. No shame there. Paragama will almost smell like tiramisu in the dry night. It does. Smells like a coffee cake. Think about it that way. If you ever had a coffee cake, that's what it smells like. Hit the retail. I was looking forward to trying it. Upnon Supremacy, not only intense. Excellent. Nights out. Year round. I'm gonna go off of year round. I'm I'm thinking magnetic. I'm so I, that's my favorite boss, the scent flanker. I love, I'm so glad, I just got it yesterday, and it's in today's video, but I had a decant of it, so I was very familiar with it. I love it. I think it's the best version of the fragrance. The whole line's great, but I would say easily that that's the Hugo Boss scent I would choose. A close second would be Boss Scent Absolute, I think would be great for night out. It's phenomenal for night out, year round.
eight bottles. You have eight bottles of the EDP? That's how that reads to me. Code Parfum is, I mean, I would suggest trying it for sure. Definitely sample it first. Don't just blind buy it. What two fragrances you layered that your peers are probably... Uh, none. None whatsoever because I don't layer my fragrances. So that's not my thing. Not my thing at all, my man. So that's a decent stopping point. So we're going to go ahead and... I'm going to have to skip ahead a little bit, but that's okay. So next, this one very much impressed me. I did a full review on this one. This is Latafa Assad. So I know it's not for everyone. Sub $30 price point, though, it's great. It's not the most accurate when it comes to Sauvage Elixir. It's got its twists. If you want accuracy, you need to go with Alexandria's version at Sauvage Elixir. That's that sucker's spot on. Nuclear performance, It's it's like... Sauvage Elixir got bottled in a different bottle. It's it's really, 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 really close. This, I would say, is like 80% Sauvage Elixir, but the coffee note, the pineapple, like there's differences, and that's what I like. Like I was saying in Dedrick's Live last night, I like, give me all the twists and the tweaks. I don't necessarily want exact copies. If I have the original, I don't necessarily want an exact copy. I want something that's similar to, inspired by, kind of has its own twist on the scent profile. And that's what Assad is. It's its own little twist on Dior Sauvage Elixir. And I really appreciate that about this fragrance. It's not nuclear like the other two, the original and the Alexandria version, like I said, but it's still a beast. This is still like a four spray fragrance and you're going to get noticed very easily. Um, some people would say, some of you right now that have this are probably like four sprays. Whew, I would do two because it is really strong. I do four sprays when I wear this one, three to four, but very warm, spicy, aromatic, and woodsy while still having a little bit of fruity freshness. And this coffee note app adds a different dark richness to it. Not necessarily a distinctive coffee smell, but it's there. So let's go ahead and pull up the note breakdown for Assad. Whoops. There we go. Spicy, sweet, woody, fresh, and oriental. Pineapple, black pepper, and tobacco. Patchouli, iris, and coffee, amber, benzoin, dry woods, vanilla, and labdanum. I don't really get any iris. Um, it doesn't really make it powdery. Like the tobacco just adds this dark, earthy tone. It doesn't distinctively smell like tobacco because this is a very interesting looking breakdown. Tobacco, iris, coffee, you got pineapple. I mean, it's it's kind of all over the place. But the spice here, you would think there's a lot more than just black pepper to spice this up because it has, because the original is full of nutmeg and cardamom. That's what gives you that in, intense spiciness. And then the nutmeg kind of gives that dry woody feel. So in the base here, you have what they're calling dry woods to kind of replicate that dry woody smell that the enhanced nutmeg oil that they used in Sauvage Elixir provides because it is a drier fragrance. But very uber masculine. A lot of people compare the Sauvage Elixir DNA to Dracar Noir. I understand the comparisons, though I think there's just as many differences as there are similarities. But the thing that impresses me about this is its twist. It manages to be relatively accurate, but still manages to do its own thing at the same time. So that's I appreciate that. And of course, it's very affordable. So this is one I definitely encourage and strongly recommend to everyone. Let's get caught up on these again. Amethyst is horrible to me. Oud for glory is okay. Well, maybe you should just avoid that line then. <laughs> the scent gets a lot of hype now. Louis Vuitton, imagination. Sublime is great. Agreed. DJ, what's going on, big dog? Hope all is well. Had a safe drive to Florida. PDM Haltane. I still haven't tried Haltane. Selling my whispers in the library tomorrow. Hadn't reached for it in a while. It's unfortunate. I, I don't recall if I've ever smelled it. Of course, I know of it. I just don't recall if I've ever tried it. MFK, GFG. I missed the past two streams, so glad I got to this one. Hope the long drive was good. It was It was a long drive, Dakota. It definitely was a long drive. Wearing pure white, Banana Republic. For two vanilla oud or ani, if you can only pick one. I, I answered this yesterday, and it was somebody else. It's funny that you're asking, Dilly. Um, but, th yeah, it was literally yesterday. It was either yesterday's stream or the stream right before. It was one of the last two streams the last two days. Um, I love both, obviously, but 
vanilla oud is a top five fragrance in this collection for me so it's it's going to be next to nothing literally four other fragrances that i would say are on par for me with it for as much as i love nishane ani it's magnificent it is my favorite fragrance from them for two vanilla ouds on its own tier its own level so i would definitely go with vanilla oud a little too sweet for me personally it's nice fragrance though just feel it's a bit more feminine leaning. I'm assuming you're talking about Body Out Oud Sublime. CJ, good to see you. Take from work. Couldn't decide. Huh? It's unfortunate. I couldn't even tell you. I, I don't even remember the last time I smelled that fragrance, honestly. So I really can't weigh in, unfortunately. Two bangers. A agreed. Yeah. Ani and Vanilla Oud. I mean, they're not redundant. Even though they're based around vanilla, they're not the same vanilla fragrance. They're not redundant. Jimmy Choo Man, Aqua, love their stuff for the price. I, I bought it at full retail, and I would do it again because I was happy to get it. And I haven't been wearing it much. I need to. I'm definitely in the right climate for it. Body Out Oud Sublime, eBay around 60 bucks. Oof. Yeah, but if you wait for it to stock at the discounters, you can get it for 40 bucks or less. So keep that in mind, guys. Don't pay more if you don't have to. Patience. Patience. It's popular. They're going to keep producing it. They keep selling it out everywhere. They're going to keep producing it. Pour Home Intense. I heard that one's discontinued, which that's the best version. That's so good. If you can find that for a good price, jump on it. I haven't spent any time with it. Fragrance Apologist, good to see you. Lamal, the original, all-time great. Agreed. Joseph, good to see you. Okay. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So I might be in my top five Middle Eastern fragrances. I love that DNA. It's Hey, that's why it's here. It's very impressive to me too, my man. Kevin, good to see you. Honestly, to me, Infinity Rose by Alhambra. And actually does have similarities to Signature Rosé, but Signature is definitely smoother for sure. Okay, to each their own. Remedy to keep your sense of smell intact, being that you're smelling all sorts of scents and having it in the air. Uh, it depends on the fragrance. Certain fragrances will wear out my sense of smell quickly, uh, so I got to be mindful of that. And it just comes with experience, knowing which, scent, which aroma chemicals and certain blends will do that to me. But I've noticed I'm not really spraying them in the air. I'm just kind of sniffing the atomizer because these are full of synthetics. And uh, I don't want to wear my nose out too much while we're in the middle of a live stream. I think I have one of the clones from you. Listen, it's a great one. Uh-oh, Razor Ramon, the barber's in the house. Shout-outs to my man. Heard Ed Sauvage Elixir was great. It is, in my opinion, the best, most accurate Sauvage Elixir clone. It's the most expensive but when you compare it to Savage Elixir, it's like half the price, especially when you catch those Alexandria discounts, 20%, 25% when they run on the weekends and stuff. Because you can get it in 60 or 100 ml. I have 100 ml. And 100 ml might last you forever because Savage Elixir, as well as Al Alexandria's version, is like a two or three spray fragrance. That's it. It's all you need. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, guys. Here's an interesting one. Really? Because I never really read any of the reviews on there. Look, complexity in a bottle. This is a well-written out essay. Magical rating. Sweet, warm, spicy. That's a good one. So I couldn't see myself paying much for the part. So, so far, we're three for three on decent ones. Hmm. This is not an elixir dupe, reminiscent. Would say it's not a clone inspired Assad, the massive amount of spices. So far, everything I'm reading, at least on Assad, nobody's being an asshole troll or anything. So, it might just be those particular listings. But overall, I'm not saying it's that that's not the case. It's an internet forum, it's bound to happen. Not as bad as Fragrantica. That's why I prefer it. Not as bad. They make like a cologne cringe. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Trust me, I don't like that about these forums either. And it's it's all of them. All of them have that issue. I don't have any, aside from like Alphanon Rare Carbon, which is very similar to, but not a direct clone of Ombre Leather. But as far as the ones that knocked off the Tom Ford bottles, I didn't buy none of those. None of those interested me. Because honestly, I'd rather get the Tom Fords. Rare Carbon was a rare situation, pun intended just to hold me off till to change the seasons because I went through my decants of ombre leather and ombre leather parfum. But this fall, I'm getting 50 ml bottles of both because I'd rather get the Tom Fords, honestly. 
How's the new gym? Loving it. Loving it. Follow, follow uh, at Ross.JC12 on Instagram. That's where the daily posts are. Jubilee 26 of Dupe of Amouage. You get your hands on Oud Mood. Super good Middle Eastern cheap. Noted. Eric, what's going on? Ah, oh, Nick, don't don't hurt my feelings here. Come on now. It's incredible. Teach their own. Your opinion versus mine. I get it. It's it's both our opinions, but oh, hurt my heart here because I love that fragrance. Hope all is well. Coconut daiquiri. Excellent choice. Good to see you, Eric. So let's get into this next one. So I haven't talked about this one in a while because it hasn't been cold in a little while, but Missan Alhambra's tobacco, a tobacco lore clone from Dior. This is gorgeous honey tobacco, sweet and fruity, crazy strong performance. It's out of stock right now at Fragrance Buy. I'm sure somebody's got it in stock somewhere. There's another one that had crazy hype last winter. So good. Believable honey. Very sweet, not too earthy type of tobacco. And like I said, there's a little bit of fruitiness here. Monster performer. Let's go ahead and pull the notes up on this one. It still impresses me, even though I haven't wore it in a while. It's impressive. It deserves to be here. Uh, I didn't have that there. Let's see where I can find it. See if I can find the note breakdown. I bet the Amazon listing will have the note breakdown. Well, maybe not. I'm trying to find a note break now. Let's go Miss on Alhambra Tobacco. Let's see. I'm trying to find a note breakdown, guys, to just do a split screen with. Well, I'll be damned. Probably should have searched every single fragrance beforehand, but. Uh, that's the main takeaways from this is honey, tobacco, and fruits. Doesn't really lean all that feminine, uh, though I do think ladies can absolutely pull this one off if they like slightly slightly masculine-leaning fragrances because of the, the tone of the tobacco offers a little bit of that. Even though it's fruity and has a thick honey smell, it doesn't make it feminine to me. Um, what we can do is pull up Tobacco Lore's note breakdown just to get an idea. Because I know it's not going to be the exact same, but there we go. So honey, smoky notes, tobacco, plum, peach. That is pretty similar to what I remember the note breakdown being for tobacco. Because when I did my individual review, I had a note breakdown that I put on the screen. I just don't remember exactly where I got it from, but that seems pretty accurate to what I remember. Smoky, spicy, sweet, fruity, oriental. I don't find this version's all that smoky, a little bit. Not crazy smoky, though, but that fruitiness and the honey. Oh, yeah. Stars of the show, guys. This one's very impressive. You can find this one for sub $30 like it was during the winter. This is a great option now. right now, this time of year here in the States in the summer. Not a good move. Don't get me wrong, but the time will come where it's good. And we'll just jump right into another one. Kate Alfresan from Latafa. Big fan of this one. Pineapple, spicy saffron, and woods ripe pineapple smell my wife's a big fan of this one very tropical you can wear this one year round performance is on the slightly stronger side a little bit better than average but not some beast and not super weak either and i don't think it's too much for the summer i wore this one in colorado's early summer i haven't wore it since i got here in florida but we're spraying this one because i wanted to smell that pineapple this is a 15 dollars superstar in my opinion this is one of those rare occasions that i encourage everybody to just go ahead and blind buy it it's around 15 bucks most places, Joma Shop, Fragrance Buy, all the different places you can get it. You can get it for 20 bucks or less. Most of the time, 15 bucks. Absolutely worth a buy. No, I haven't tried Unlimited, the white bottle yet. I believe that's a coconut fragrance. I haven't looked at it, but this, if you like pineapple, is the way to go. A little bit of Baccarat Rouge. I've seen people compare it, say it's a Ventus mix with Baccarat Rouge. I don't think so. Just because it has pineapple doesn't mean it smells like a Ventus. But I do get the saffron. The saffron here does give a little bit of a Baccarat Rouge 540 feel. So I understand where people are coming with coming from with that. Let's pull up the notes real quick. 
say I have the unlimited. Let's check the unlimited real quick. Is it coconut? Of course, they don't have the notes. That would have just been convenient, right? There we go. Fruity, sweet, woody, fresh, and oriental. Pineapple, saffron, fur balsam, jasmine, cedarwood, amber, oud. So the amber cedarwood combo, you can kind of look as kind of an amber wood. It probably is amber wood. Then jasmine and saffron, that's kind of like half of Baccarat Rouge. There's no breakdown right there. So that's where your tie-in comes from. But it, the spiciness here really makes it like a ripe pineapple, like fresh cut. Not pulling out the ice chest like an iced pineapple, like Summer Vibe 4.0. Not like that. Not that minty, fresh, watery type of juicy pineapple. This is like fresh cut. And then you have that saffron that really, it, that spiciness, man, I'm telling you, it's the difference maker with this. I think without the saffron, this fragrance wouldn't be near as good as it actually is. So this is one that I strongly encourage you guys to check out. This one continues to impress me. Latafa's Kate Alfresan. For 15 bucks, it's pretty much a no-brainer at this point. So I know we're pretty far behind. Let's try to get caught up. So I'm going to have to skip some of these. I apologize. All right. So, John, I appreciate the 499 Super Chat. Looking forward to your full collection video. That is coming. Neve's Impromptu Collection live stream was really fun. Send of the day, 100 Silent Ways. I appreciate the Super Chat. Thank you, man. Congrats on the new place. Enjoy wearing Blonde Amber by Clive Christian. I've never tried that one. Good to see you, though, Rob. Looking shredded in your avatar. Hachivat's worth the money, but they aren't redundant to each other. Hachivat dry down is pretty different. I'm assuming you're asking somebody was asking versus Aventus because the dry downs are different. Hachivat's an oak, oak moss bomb. The openings are similar, but they definitely walk different paths after a few minutes. Amari, good to see you. Glad you made it safely. Well, thank you. I, I greatly appreciate that. It was it was a few days. Took a few days to, to we broke it down over a three day trip, but we're here now. Tobacco is a solid fragrance. Great performance, too. Can't wait to rock it this winter. It'll be back in my rotation for sure. Bought Camaro Almond Tents a week ago after you recommended it. I hope it arrives soon. So I'm going to pause on that, on that particular comment because that is the next fragrance we're talking about. This, if we were ranking this, Sublime and this would have been the top two because this is super impressive to me. It is old formula Dior Almond Tents. It's super waxy. Such a beautiful iris. It literally smells like Dior Homme Intense. It's not as sweet as the modern formulas. There's a little bit more leather, musk, wood balance going on here. It's not as sweet. Oh, man, but it is It is Dior Homme Intense. They nailed this. So, so good. Lipstick. I know that sounds like a turnoff to some. If you've never smelled any of the Dior Homme or, or any of the designer Iris fragrances that have that waxiness to them, that make up super powdery smell. It probably does sound like a turnoff. If you if you have experience with those, then you understand where it's coming from. You either love it or you hate it. I don't think there's really a middle ground with this type of iris fragrance. I think it's either just totally not your style, not for you, smells like a chick kind of thing. Or, in my case, and a lot of others too, your favorite DNA Kind of my favorite DNA. I, mean, I love Iris, both the unnatural fantasy, super powdery Iris, and the natural boiled earthy, not as powdery Florentine Iris. I like, and every every version in between, the creamy Irises and so on. Because like Gentleman Eau de Parfum from Givenchy, that's a creamy, balmy, because of Tolo Balsam, very creamy and balmy type of iris. Some of the orris roots come across like more of an orris butter, this buttery, creamy iris that's not super powdery. There's many different ways for iris can come across as an earthy violet smell and so on. So this is far from a natural smell. Uh, fantasy iris as it's known, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Man, I'm such a fan of this fragrance. This one really impressed me. Let's go to the Aroma Concepts website. Let's type in Camaro. Here we go. Camaro Almond Tints. So sage, lavender, bergamot, hibiscus, and iris, cedarwood, vetiver, leather, and patchouli. So the standouts here are definitely the lavender, the iris, all of this. The whole base really stands out. The patchouli adds a little bit of creaminess to it, but you're going to get a lot of woodiness and leather here as it dries, but it's not overdone. It's actually pretty well balanced. 
And even though there's no musk, ambrette, or vanilla or anything listed, it does have this kind of sweet vanilla smell, but not like the newer formulas where it's a bunch of vanilla and ambrette, but you do smell it. It is in the DNA. It is present. This is, man, just get this. Don't even, you don't even need to get Dior Roman Tense. Just get this. Save yourself the money. Don't be wrong. Newer versions of Dior Roman Tense don't smell exactly like this. Like I said, this is more like the 07 formula, the, very, the vintage stuff. But I mean, I mean, still, if you don't want to spend, say, 90 bucks or whatever it is these days, 90, 100 bucks from discounters on the Dior Roman Tense 2020 formula, you get this for 30 something bucks, 37. I got a 10% off code TLTG10, save you $3.70. Not a huge discount, but mid $30 price point before any taxes or anything. You get this 100 ml and you're good. You're good. This is one of the rare occasions where I said, just get the clone because this one is that impressive. This is so impressive if you like the oral intense. So let's see. What was it? So Alien Smasher, interesting name. Appreciate you saying that because it's perfect segue into the next fragrance. Love the new setup. Welcome to Florida. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate you. Do you know of any cheaper alternatives to something like Austin? Uh, not really. Nothing really comes to mind. I would say just save up and get City Rhythm Austin if you really like how it smells. Which is better, Sidrat Essence versus Chaos in the Ocean or Kissa? Ooh, interesting. Uh, probably Kissa. I think Kissa then Sidrat Essence because Chaos in the Ocean is a little sharp, a little too sharp and synthetic for me. I like it, don't love it. It's nice. I could see where some people would enjoy it. It's, I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but so far it hasn't made me want to wear it. Uh, it's literally right there. Well, it's off camera for you guys, right at the edge where you can't see right here. It's right in the front. I need to spend some time with it, but it just doesn't excite me. Whereas Kissa, I find super interesting. The florals, the juiciness, a lot of lang a lang a watery citrus smell, a lot of citruses too. Um, it's a beautiful fragrance. And then Cidrat Essence is just fresher Cidrat Boise. I mean, it's hard to beat. So you can't go wrong with either. I would say it's between Cidrat Essence and Kissa, but the most interesting fragrance of those three is definitely Paris Corners Kissa. Hope you're well. Atelier Maturé Pomelo. Never tried that. Sebastian mentioned yesterday that it's discontinued. Whispers in the library. Would have sent it to you had you lived in Sweden. Well, I appreciate the thought. It's the thought that counts, Tyler. Thank you. Cheers to you, sir. That's an interesting combo. That's something I would have never thought. Just goes to show what happens when you just start exper experimenting, spraying different things together. Starman Nebula is great clone for pure malt. I've heard it is. The boss is in the house. What's going on, boss? Good to see you, man. Free all day. What's up, Ross? Bought tomorrow. Oh, well. That's a, uh, that's a retype. So keep the hard work. Latafa Fakar Black Y80P clone. Really like our moth Hunter Intense. It's cheap and smooth. It's more attractive to you. Elysium Parfum Cologne or Sedley? That's a tough one. Coming in hot with that question. Uh, mm, I guess I got to weigh it out this way. I have so much that smells like Elysium because I'm such a fan of the DNA versus I have Sedley and Mahir Legacy. I love Sedley. Mahir Legacy is a great clone, but I have countless ways. To, I mean, literally, one of them is right here, Trillium. We're going to be talking about it. I mean, we might as well do that one next. But mm, I got to go with Elysium here. I mean, seriously, I have to go with Elysium. I mean, it's literally one of their renditions is right here. Amir Trillium from Paris Corner. So some of you are probably like, why? It's the weakest one out of all of them. It's also the most charming for high heat for the gym, for just fresh out the shower. If you want the brightest, the brightest of them, this. This is where it's at. It's the same note breakdown, sharp, metallic. Full of grapefruit, black currant. God, so beautiful. I wore it out the shower literally two nights ago. It's great for the gym. It's like four hours. I did a full review on it. It's a four-hour fragrance at best. You can douse yourself in this. It's light little spritzes. It's not a serious atomizer. Kind of a shitty atomizer, to be honest with you. The bottle's gorgeous, but, I mean, that doesn't really matter. Love the cap. Some of you would say Fragrance World Imperium or the 
the div fragrance world's divine whatever the hell divine asylum i think is which one i haven't got around to getting it yet i'm gonna check it out at some point because i love all the different twists of elysium i'm gonna get that one at some point but for me this one impresses me because it's so fresh even fresher than elysium parfum cologne which i didn't know if i could get one because most of the time when elysium parfum cologne gets cloned they dial up the oil concentration to get more longevity out of it, right? Like a Zion, for example, uh, Sam Anders Blue Sapphire, which those are cloning the Parfum more than the Parfum Cologne, but they always dial up the oil concentration. So it's not going to wear light and airy like this. So that's what surprised me and impressed me the most about Trillium is they didn't dial it up. They were willing to risk hearing people complain about performance to give a different experience, a super for the freshest experience for the DNA, in my opinion. That's what impresses me. This was a risk because typically with the clones, people are expecting performance for cheap. You know, it's like that's the benefit of getting the clone most of the time. They're going to perform better. This is not the case. This is a weaker performance, weaker performance than Elysium Parfum Cologne, which notoriously gets criticized for performance. So I love this about it. You might get 45 minutes of projection if you're lucky. An hour's pushing it. Spray your clothes if you want that. But on a hot day, it'll keep pushing. If you're hot as hell outside, high humidity, this is the one. This is great for it. You just have to be mindful that it's it lasts a little bit longer than a CK1 Summer Flanker. You're not going to get a ton of performance out of this. But the performance you do get is so invigorating and uplifting. So let's go ahead and pull this one up. We're going to have to go to Aroma Concepts for this. There we go. Trillium. So as you can see, it's the same note breakdown as Elysium Parfum Cologne. Grapefruit, lemon, bergamot, lime, thyme, artemisia, and galbanum. Mids, vetiver, juniper berries, black currant, apple, pink pepper, cedar, cypriol oil. Nagamatha. Don't know what the hell that is. Lily of the Valley, jasmine, and rose. Base of ambergris, leather, vanilla, benzoin, and labanum. So big crazy note breakdown. Typical of Raja Dove's fragrances. It's much more simplified than that. It's metallic, juicy citrus, sharp grapefruit and black currant. That's the main things you're going to get at the top. You get a little bit of this herbal feel, the thyme, artemisia, mixing with some of the vibrance of pink pepper. You get a lot of vetiver. I don't really get any leather here. Other renditions, you get more of the leather and a little bit of benzoin. Touch of vanilla maybe, but not really all that sweet is basically what you can expect from the scent profile here. It's just super inviting and super enjoyable. So may surprise some of you that of all the versions of Elysium I could have put here that are affordable Middle Eastern fragrances, I chose the weakest performing one for a very specific reason. It's because of the wearing experience and because it's the most situationally appropriate for being in the hottest of weather and wanting to smell incredible in situations like if you like to wear a fragrance to the gym if you're like me, you want fresh and clean, but you don't want strong. You don't want to be that guy in the gym that smells like Eros. I always find a guy that smells like Eros or a bunch of girls that smell like Baccarat Rouge or cheap vanilla perfumes. I always run across that at the gyms. Not yet at this one, but it was notorious at Vasa Fitness when I was in Colorado Springs. But this is great for guys that want to wear something fresh and clean and not really just punch anybody in the nose when you're in a machine or a cable next to them. You're just kind of wearing it for you or a refresher after you leave if you don't get a chance to get a shower yet until you get home, that's where this comes in handy. That's what I find impressive and appreciate about Paris Corners and Mere Trillium. So thank you for the question because it provided – I love when you guys provide a great segue into one of the top fragrances that is on topic. 120 likes, 180 viewers. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. You won't hear me griping. Favorite from the Dior line. I'm assuming you mean Dior Om, and that is hands down Dior Om Parfum. I have two bottles of the old 75 ml version. Uh, one's sealed. I may never get to it, but I have it just in case because I only wear Dior Om Parfum in the winter because it's such a heavy fragrance. I've never sprayed it more than four times because it's a monster, but hands down Dior Om Parfum. Amethyst, good for summer. No. I don't think so. Very thick, jammy, sweet rose patchouli oud. Thick, heavy wear. Definitely not good for the summer. Uh, I missed something. I missed something here because I don't know. 
there it is. It has iris. Okay. So basically, have you ever smelled lipstick? Like even when you were a kid, you know, or just going through the cosmetics area at a department store where they're maybe doing someone's makeup because that's when you'll most notoriously smell iris that I've learned over the years um, is walking through the cosmetics area. That's where you can really learn what that smell is. That's the best advice I can give you to learn that smell. Ombre Noir, Lana Wheat Delone clone from Alexandria. I personally love it as much as the OG, maybe a bit more. I haven't tried that one. Diorum Sports, still the only Diorum I've tried. I'm going to blind buy Diorum intent soon, I think, though. Fuck it. Okay, teach their own. Now, which version of Sport? I'm assuming the newest one because there's four versions, and I, I am lucky enough to have all four. The 08 original is the best, even more so than the 2012 that had Iris, but... They're all good. Every version of Dior Home Sport that's come out has been a really good fragrance. But in my opinion, the original 2008 formula was the best one. But the new one's really good. 2017 was phenomenal. And 2012 had Iris. Hard to complain about any of them. More of a cozy background. Well, we're not done setting everything up yet, boss. So this is temporary. This angle's temporary. Some of the boxes and stuff you see in the closet being open where you see things, it's temporary. I still need to find my webcam. I'm going to adjust the exposure and everything and use my webcam. It's going to be more over here so I can really put this gigantic monitor to use more instead of my, because my old monitor is right here. And I've got split screens here instead of all on, because I have a 49 inch Samsung right here, 1440 monitor that I could put multiple windows on. So it's going to adjust. You're going to see a little bit of a difference here when the final setup. So it's probably going to be like next week before you see all of that because I won't be streaming tomorrow or this weekend. So I'm taking three days off of streaming moving forward. I'm only streaming on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday moving forward. That's the weekly schedule, 3 p.m. Central. So it's going to change a little bit. And then when I record videos, it's not always going to be right. This is, temp again, this is temporary. I don't have my lights set up. You're going to see those in the background on recorded videos. It's going to be a totally different angle. I'm going to be doing some recording outside on the back patio. I'm going to be doing some recording on the beach. There's a lot of changes that's coming to the content and the formats uh, moving forward. But this is what you're seeing right now is just kind of a temporary thing for this week. I, I can't complain. I have no complaints aside from the Chipotle here sucks, and the next one closest is 31 minutes away. So I'm pretty much done with Chipotle, unfortunately. That's my only complaint is the, the staff of Gen Z douchebags that works at the Chipotle literally two minutes from me is awful. They suck. Efficiency is not their strong suit. I feel bad for that general manager. I've given them four chances now. I'm done. One for four. They, one good experience on out of four tries, three strikes you're out is what happens. So, yeah, that's awful, 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 awful experience. The worst Chipotle. If any of you work there that are seeing this right now, you guys suck. Sorry to say it. It's the truth. I got to keep it honest with you guys. Be better, do better. They're paying you to do a job. So that's my only complaint because you guys know I love Chipotle. I typically eat that after the gym every day. So that's what's having to change drastically in my life is no longer Chipotle for post-workout meals because my only option is that one. And I'm not doing it. I'm not giving that place my money. And it's more expensive here. I'm not paying more for shit service. And if I wanted to eat raw vegetables, I'd just go bite an onion like an apple. I could go on and on. <laughs> I could go on and on, guys, because it's very heartbreaking for me that these guys ruin Chipotle for me that I just can't eat there anymore. It's not worth wasting my money. Can't have everything, right? So every, everything else is awesome. Got to have something that sucks. Unfortunately, it's it's my favorite place to eat. Oud Lemon Mint and Oud Imperial by Paris Monte Carlo. Just amazing, both of them. Uh, so I've done a full review on Lemon Mint. If not on this channel, I know for sure I did. Pretty sure I did. And I, cause I know I did a collaboration review with Chad a few years ago on his channel too. So I believe I've, I'm involved in two reviews on Oud Lemon Mint, but Oud Imperial, I have no experience with, unfortunately. Some serious ASMR. Well, it's a mechanical Corsair keyboard. And that's the thing. It's a Corsair gaming keyboard. So it's a, 
definitely mechanical, loud. I've had uh, people complain when I'm on the phone with them if I'm doing some work and they hear it. And they're, God, your keyboard's awful. It's so loud. <laughs> but it's satisfying to actually type on. The feedback's really good. Audible and the physical, the actual touch, the feedback's great. It's a great keyboard. <clears throat> Late to the party. Send of the day, ginger and white tea. I love Austin. Ooh, lemon mint thoughts on it. We just talked about it. Send of the day, Star Walker. That's a nice, freshy buzz. Good choice. Not a whole lot. Missed uh, six fragrances so far. We got four left. Zafiro Crafted Oud. Okay. Oud Wood Clone. Pasquille Morbito or Noir Vintage. I have I have uh, Bois and Pluie, the coffee and patchouli fragrance. It's literally. Is it that shelf? Is that shelf? There it is. It's on this shelf right here. I was sniffing on that one the other day. I need to start wearing it more. Coffee and patchouli. Great fragrance. I bought it like 10 bucks for a 200 ml a long time ago, years ago. Kevin with $5 Super Chat. Is it better to wait for off-season for fragrances or just wait for sales? I, I would say wait for sales more so than wait for off-season. Reason being, if you know you're going to get it anyway, if you know it's something you're going to want to add to your collection – Whenever you feel it's worth it to you, that's what it comes down to is value. Like, okay, that's a good price. I'll pay that. doesn't matter what time of year. If it's a summer fragrance and we're in the middle of winter, if that's the time, then that's the time. I do it all the time. I buy stuff off season and wait till the season rolls around. But I also buy stuff right in the middle of season because the price was right. And it was like, it, I felt like it was time. It was justified. I was able to justify it to myself for this is why I'm going to buy this right now. So it's a little of both, honestly. Uh, it's just one of those things you have to make the determination on is the value there for you is what it comes down to. Because value is what we place individually on everything. Expensive to you is not expensive to me necessarily. Cheap to you is not necessarily cheap to me and vice versa. So it comes down to the, your assessment of the value more so than buying it off season or catching a certain sale. So that's that's the main determining factor. But I appreciate the five dollar super chat and the thought provoking question. I appreciate that. I hope that helps. Hope that my my thought process helps a little bit. Sales. I mean, that's typically the easy answer is just sales. Bulgari Man, the original. I've never smelled the original. Gorgeous scent and good. Ginger tea is good. Another new Raja. I don't know. They have another one in the in the works right now. I'm not sure. Trillium seems like a good summer reach compared to fragrances like Chrome and Lacoste Freshies. Just a bit more money, you get more complexity. I wouldn't even say it's all that much complex. Even though it looks complex, it's really much more simplistic in practice when you actually smell the aroma. It's much more simplistic than it would lead you to believe. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've ever even heard of a Toy Boy clone. I can't help you with that, unfortunately. I apologize. I don't have a better answer for you. But on that note, we're going to move into the next one with Shiaka from Cadlage Perfume. So you guys have heard me rave about this one. This is another one I did a full review on. This is the only difference I've been able to pick. And that's a side-by-side -side comparison is I get a little bit more yellow floral here. Than I do from Reflection Man from Umwash. <sighs> so good. This is pretty much Reflection Man. Now, out in the air, good luck telling me the difference. Good luck. Let me wave my hand by you with one, then wave the other hand by you with the other, and you tell me which one. It's going to be a lucky guess if you tell me which one's the clone and which one's Umwash. That's how accurate this is. That's what makes it so impressive because for me, I have a 1A and 1B for my favorite from Umwash. A lot of you heard me say this. Epic Man and Reflection Man. I can't decide which one is my favorite. I like them both so much. They're both situational for me, but this nailed what I believe to be one of the best Iris fragrances ever created. They nailed it. The quality is really good. The performance is really good. The bottle is a gimmick. It's stupid looking. I, I think it's stupid. It doesn't feel cheap. It's actually pretty quality built. I just think it looks stupid. It looks like a damn cheese grater. You know, almost looks like a cheese grater of sorts. So I don't like the bottle, but at the end of the day, the bottle is 
is irrelevant. It matters, but not so much. The fragrance and how it performs is what matters. And this is pretty much, I would say, 98%. Amwaj Reflection Man. The 2% being the slight increase in Lang Lang. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the same quality as Amwaj. That's, that's it. Because performance is pretty much what and what. And then the scent profile, like I said, pretty much what and what. So let's pull it up here. Shiaka. Shiaka for him. 8.9 out of 10 with 10 ratings. Great rating. Just not enough reviews on here. I don't know how long it's been on the site, but powdery, woody, floral, fresh, oriental. Pettigrain, pink pepper, rosemary. And you get all of that. You get this nice, fresh green feel. Now, the pink pepper offers a light, sweet vibrance more so than a spice. It's not really spicy, even though you see rosemary and pink pepper. It's not all that spicy. A little bit. A little fresh spicy, but that's the extent of it. Jasmine, neroli, orris root, lang -a lang Floral dominant heart. It is a floral dominant fragrance. And then cedar, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver. A nice woody presence here. No earthy tones whatsoever. Aside from this fresh herbal green feel that you get early on in the fragrance. This is so good. So well put together. And I speak from the standpoint of the scent profile as a whole. Not just Shiaka. Not just this particular take on Reflection Man. I mean Reflection Man's DNA as a whole. This is a gorgeous fragrance that if you like Reflection Man and don't want to spend the money, let's say you've tried it and you're like, ah, can't spend 100 and let's say 160 bucks, 70 bucks, 80 bucks, whatever on a 100 ml. I don't want to do it. We can spend 30, 40 dollars, whatever it costs on this. And it's it's pretty much spot on. Like I said, 98 percent accurate is, is kind of the number I would put on, which is higher than most. They killed it. Chiaka from Cadillac Perfumes. It's my favorite from the brand. For sure. Uh, Lafetti Intoxicate is up there. Infini, Absolute, the Woody Aventus Twist. That's another one that's kind of like my top three from the brand, but this is definitely number one. It is that good. So we're about to hit the one-hour mark. We have two fragrances left, so obviously we're going to be going over the one-hour mark. Hit the like button for Ross the Boss. I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you. Jared, Amethyst is amazing. It gives me an actual headache in the summertime. I bet. That's a little too much for that. Cheers, my frag brother. Bulgari Tigar got a travel size. Profoundly unimpressed. Really? I was uber impressed with the de with the, the carded sample that I have. Kind of bland. But if you like it, that's cool. Just not my thing. I mean, teach their own. I was very impressed by it. I thought it was great. I want a bottle. I think it's really good. But again, teach their own. Lipstick on his best lipstick. Iris makeup bag smiled. All them ever. Even Dior. I didn't count. It's well over a thousand. I didn't count though. <clears throat> I don't know of any clones of Dior Homme Sport, but I'm sure people are weigh in on on Dior Homme because I don't really have any Dior Homme clones. But I'm sure people will weigh in in the chat. Not really. Once something's gone, I'm pretty much done with it for the most part. Um, because I don't have to have it. I mean, I have. I'm not hurting for a fragrance. That's kind of how I look at it. Is I, I always have more stuff coming. We did a today's video is a haul video with seven fragrances, you know. So no, so I, I don't need to see that. Most of the time that stuff happens anyway. So not really. Aaron Terrence Hughes, legend, beautiful fragrance. Sad he discontinued, he's discontinuing it in November. Let people hi it's Ross, not Russ, but all good. It happens. On my way home, scent of the day, Club de Nuit Siage. So if you're driving and typing, I totally get why you spelled my name wrong. Don't drive and text. <laughs> I appreciate you being here, but don't get in a wreck. Uh, I will. I will. I, ha I have some. I haven't had time to set them up yet. Josh, what's going on? We're an explorer. When do we get to see a beach video? Uh, within the next couple of weeks. Within the next couple of weeks. I want to get everything settled in here before I start doing that. Yeah, it's seven hundred and sixteen dollars, and I spent a ton of money. I mean, I spent nine hundred dollars on this monitor, eight something, right under nine. With taxes, it was over nine hundred on this monitor alone. I got this desk for three hundred. Those shelves were two hundred a piece. Like I've spent a lot of money, so I was like, okay, I can wait on the sign. And on top of that, I've been buying fragrances and all the stuff for around the apartment, new stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna settle down. I'm gonna settle down on the sign. I'm holding off. Maybe at the end of the month. 
No, no, I am not. I was born and raised on this Gulf Coast. I am absolutely not. We're dealing with hurricanes my entire life, except for the three years I was in Colorado. That's the only three years out of 38 that I had, didn't have to deal with, with hurricanes. I believe it, Ron. I believe it so far. Here in Norway, we have some nasty rain yesterday. Some places worse than others. Is that Elroy Prepson? That is indeed Elroy Prepson. In my place, not so bad. Where our almond tents is a great opening, which reminds me of Dior, but that dry down seems very powerful. Well, yeah, of course it's very powdery. That's the point. <laughs> the Dior Ohm line is super powdery. I don't have the tux or suits, so I'm not the person to ask, unfortunately, my friend. Uh, I don't have either one. So There you go. Omar says the tux. Bigger city than the Springs? Uh, no, not really. I mean, if you talk... If you count Panama City and Panama City Beach, because they're two separate cities or towns, technically, then, yeah, it's bigger. But where I'm at is not Panama City Beach. So I'm literally on the beach. I haven't given it a full wearing yet. Just that first impression so far. Um, and I'm not going to for a while because it's hot and humid. So it's not going to be till when it cools down a little bit that I'll be jumping into that one. You tried Hot Always from Bond Number 9. No, I have not. It's discontinued, unfortunately. If you have any recommendations, similar fragrance would be great. Sorry, I can't help you there, my man. Cost and value are totally different. Agreed. Here are some chat. Love the background. Also, send the day. CK1 Summer 2021. Royale Triple X. Should do a series of cheap versus expensive because I love seeing when people choose the $20 one over the $109 when not knowing the, the brand or approve much love but i understand what you mean oh no 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 this is a clone this is a clone of a raja parfums fragrance elysium parfum cologne that's why it looks like it they, they ripped the bottle off and the cap and everything actually the cap's nicer <laughs> than uh elysium parfum cologne now elysium parfum different cap what do you think about calvin klein now have I smelled that? I don't think I've smelled that. Late to the stream, one hop in, show some love. Wear metal rain. That's good stuff. I just dropped the reel on Shiaka. So good. Indeed, it's good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, we're going to jump into what some might say is their favorite, Rasasi Hawass. This beautiful purple juice, beast. Spicy Invictus meets Invictus Aqua because some people, I, every time I talk about it, I've almost sworn this off from the channel because I'm tired of people arguing with me. It smells more like Invictus than Invictus Aqua to me, though I get where people are coming from when they say Invictus Aqua. And yes, this came out before Invictus Aqua 2016, but it did not come out before in original Invictus. So I get tired. That's the argument I always have to have. And I get tired of having to be a broken record. Um, but Let's just look at it individually because it's really not all that much Invictus. It's kind of its own thing because of the spiciness, cardamom, cinnamon. I even get a little bit of a smoky tone on my skin. This is a four spray fragrance for me. This is a room filler. This is a beast. This is very synthetic. So it does have a cheap synthetic smell. So that's I can see where some may not like this, but pulls in compliments. I know that matters to a lot of people. Performance is phenomenal. I know that matters to a lot of people. And most of the time, $45, $50. Sometimes the price will skyrocket. I advise you to wait. Don't pay over $50 for this fragrance. It, you will find it under $50, and it's worth it under $50. It is, it is really good. It still impresses me even to this day. It's a phenomenal fragrance. Let's go ahead and pull up those notes. Rasasi Hawass. Look at that gray juice in this picture. That's interesting. Fresh, fruity, sweet, aquatic, and synthetic. Apple, pear, bergamot, cinnamon, lemon, pineapple. Melon, orange, blossom, violet, cardamom, plum. Musk, patchouli, amberwood, cedarwood, ambergris, sandalwood. So a bunch of woods, musks, and fruits is the main takeaway here with some spice. It is very fruity. As you can see, apple, pear, bergamot, lemon, pineapple, melon, plum. There's a lot of fruits and citruses here, and it is so good. I'm here for it. It is so, so good, guys. I did a full review on this one. I featured in a bunch of lists uh, countless times. This has been on the channel. It's exhausting, like I was saying when I have it on the channel because it's 
people come out the woodwork to talk about this one and have arguments and debates and all that stuff. It gets exhausting sometimes. But this fragrance just goes to show it's a hot topic. It has been for years. I was very late to the party. Um, it's been around for years. Came out in 2015, according to Parfumo. And I didn't get it till 2021. Yeah, 2021, I believe. And it's phenomenal. It is such a good fragrance. I was, again, very late to the party, but it doesn't change the fact that it's one of the most impressive cheap Middle Eastern fragrances that I own. <clears throat> so let's see. Let me skip ahead a little bit more. We still got two more. We had three left, turns out. So now there's two. Scrolling. Let's see. Don't know if you've covered why I sell myself. Not yet. Not yet. I haven't smelled it yet. Just got it today, and it smells like it's in the same vein as Polo Red Parfum. Big letdown from YSL. Well, now you just let me down. I wish you wouldn't have told me that. Because I like YSL. I mean, I like Polo Red Parfum. It just doesn't smell like Polo Red. So my takeaway from Polo Red Parfum is it smells mostly absinthe and iris. Is that kind of what you get from YSL myself? It's just disappointing to hear that. New setup's looking good. We'll be in Destin in a couple of weeks. Where are you taking me to dinner, LOL? Uh, I can't make any guarantees. I don't know what the wife would say about that. <laughs> but it's good to see you. Oh, and, it, and you're going to be coming right in off-season. That's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's about to be a great time around here once off-season hits. We roll into late August going into September. Water parks, that's when I'm going to go hit Shipwreck Island. Water park's still going to be open and it just won't be super crowded. Excited for that. I haven't been to a water park in a while. Hit him with it. I thought you started at 5. Uh, 3 o'clock Central. 5, whatever's after Eastern. <laughs> no, I don't start at 5. I've never. This is rare. Once or twice I've ever started at 5 Central. Over a 1,000. Yeah, oh, yeah, easily. Like 13, 1,400 range. <clears throat> Enigma coming in a day or two. Thanks for your review on it. Super stoked to get that one. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I hold it in very high regard. Beautiful cola tobacco fragrance. So good. What up, my beautiful people? Making major profits. Good to see you. I like the luxury high-end. True Middle Eastern perfumery from brands like Arabian Oud. Amouage. I talk about Amouage all the time. Amouage is featured prominently on this channel. Uh, but Spirit of Dubai, Dar al Tib, and Arabian Oud, I don't have any experience with them. Any experience with them. But Amouage is one of my favorite brands. They're prominently featured here. I have not. Pride Intense. No, I have not. Enigma is very good. Indeed. Shaka Red and Blue both surprised me how good they are. Red is my personal favorite. Red Red's definitely the better one of the two. You recommend a woody, spicy fragrance with longevity? I sure can. Dior Sauvage Elixir. That's a woody, spicy fragrance with serious longevity. The weather over here in the UK is cold and rainy most of the Oh, there you go. Sauvage Elixir, easily. That's that's a clear-cut choice. For that, for that characteristic and scent profile and your weather, even if you don't want to get Sauvage Elixir specifically, get something that smells like it because it's going to shine for your climate and situation. And, the, and it's a woody, spicy fragrance. Absolutely an easy, easy recommendation there. And watch, you're gonna you're gonna reply, but I don't like Savage Elixir. <laughs> it's a real possibility. I can't complain, Verum. Good to see you, my man. Train the Wii, good stuff. I haven't worn that in a long time. Uh not really. Not not a fan myself. Damn. That sucks to hear. Labelle Glacial Blue, Mexican brand. I've never, never heard of them. Is Siaj the best Silver Mountain water clone? I traded mine for another frag because I know it's easy to get. So if you don't like how, because the knock on that one is it's very chemical smelling, which I agree. Banana Republic's Metal Rain is better. It just doesn't perform near as well. If you take performance out of it, that's the better rig, better clone. If performance is super important to you, then Siaj is the one to go with. And then you also have now a good one. The quality is pretty good, and it kind of falls in between in performance. It would be Afnan's Supremacy in Heaven. I'm going to look into that one. That was cheap, too. 
from a moth. Yeah, what a ripoff. Backgrounds looking great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Gus with the 499 Super Chat. Do you watch Dark Side of the Ring? Yes, I do. Doink the Clown was a crackhead kicking ass. Yes, he was. I watched that episode like the week before I moved was when it came out. Yeah, I watched Dark Side of the Ring. I watched Dark Side of the 90s, Dark Side of Football. Um, I'm not a fan of Vice, but some of their – like I don't like the philosophies of the channel, but I do like some of the programming. And then they had Tales from the Territory that the rocket put on with Jerry Jarrett and all of them talking and Jerry, the King Lawler and everybody, Jeff Jarrett talking old stuff. That was really cool. But wrestling stuff, you, you can believe I'm watching. You can believe, but I appreciate the 499 super chat. <clears throat> he does. This is too powerful and it's too basic for him because it's linear. It doesn't develop. Do Justin likes to develop, likes development in his fragrances. Hawass doesn't develop. It's pretty much the same from start to finish and it's powerful. So, yeah, I, I never expected him to like Hawass. I was shocked when he bought it. He did it for the culture, basically. I knew he wasn't going to like it. On that note, let's get into the next one. So, Lord Despoir Ombre, clone of LV's Ombre Nomad. This is a powerhouse. This is the fragrance. The reason this one's so impressive is I can't believe that they used this quality of oils. This is Paris Corner. And it smells much higher quality than you would expect from Paris Corner. They even in the read in the write up talk about the raw materials that they used. They made sure to let everybody know like hey, we we did it up this go around with these clones. And I don't care for the other two that are LV clones. I can't stop sniffing it. But this is immensely powerful raspberry oud patchouli rose kind of smell, smoky, beautiful. So powerful and smooth but it's aggressively strong that's the thing it's a smooth aroma it's just powerful super 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 powerful let's pull up the notes on that one there it is 43 dollars. so made with the finest ingredients and a unique combination of natural oils this perfume has seductive and enduring notes that will leave you craving more there you go. So they, they start off with telling you, like, look, we use good oils. We use really good oils for these. And they're not lying. Agarwood, which is oud, geranium, raspberry, rose, amberwood, benzoin, birch, incense, and saffron. That's all that smokiness, birch and incense. It is, it is something to behold. The performance is crazy. And this is not for everybody. This is a polarizing scent. It's a fruity, smoky oud wood. Oud Rose is what I meant to say, not Oud Wood. Oud Rose. It doesn't smell done to death, but it also doesn't smell super unique. I've only smelled Ombre Nomad one time. It seemed, from what I remember about it, it, this has always seemed to be pretty accurate to me. I don't have it to compare it side by side, but from what I remember about it, because I got this like a week and a half, two weeks after I had Ombre Nomad on hand, and it from what I remember of it, this seems to be really accurate. And the thing that's most impressive, I keep going back to the quality of the oils. If you want a high quality fragrance from Paris Corner, this is the one. This is the highest quality smell I've ever put my nose on from them. They have gotten better with other fragrances too, but this is the standout from a quality standpoint with Paris Corner. It's, it's fantastic. That's what's most impressive to me about it is the quality. So I know there's other Ombre Nomad clones out there, and I haven't tried them, but I'll tell you what, this is going to be hard to top. I'm not saying there isn't one out there that tops it, because it all comes down to taste. What I, what you think may top this, I may not think it tops it, and vice versa. But this is, this is going to be hard to beat. This is really, really impressive. And then we'll just go ahead and do the last one, Pandora Scents Charuto Tobacco Vani. So it's rare that I get a Tom Ford clone that stops me from getting the real deal. I don't think I'll ever buy tobacco vanilla. It does a good enough job. Creamy vanilla, spicy and aromatic, earthy. It's really good. It performs really well. When fall rolls around, this is going right back in the rotation. Because I got this as it started to warm up. It's beautiful. I got it at the same time as the Carolina Herrera Mystery, uh, Mystery Tobacco, Mysterious Tobacco, whatever. One that smells like red tobacco. I got that at the same time as this, and I prefer this. Don't me wrong, that one's really good, but this is better. 
I just think it's such an accurate depiction of tobacco vanilla. There's so many fragrances out there that have ripped off tobacco vanilla, smell like tobacco vanilla, tobacco vanilla with a twist, kind of like tobacco vanilla. They were going for carbon copy here, and I'm not going to say it's one-to-one. I'm going to say it's minimum 90%. It's accurate enough to where I think I'm good. Kind of like how Rare Carbon has held me off from getting ombre leather and ombre leather parfum. That's more inspired by. It's kind of a combination of the two than a clone of either. Whereas this is definitely they were going for a clone option here. And they even got the cap kind of similar to the Tom Ford cap as far as the shape uh, and the color scheme and all that good stuff. But this is incredible. I'm such a fan. I really am. Let me go ahead and pull up the notes. So here we go, the other one, Mysterious Tobacco. So they're on sale right now. Tobacco leaf, spices, tonka bean, tobacco flower, vanilla, cocoa, dry fruit accord, and woods. So this is pretty accurate overall. Um, it's not anything special that makes it impressive to me other than it's it's it scratches the tobacco vanilla itch enough to make me not want to buy the original, which few clones are able to do. That's what makes it impressive to me. If you can stop or slow down or even eliminate the desire to get the original, it's a clone that's really doing its job and showing its value and its worth. And that is what this has done. That is what Pandora Sense Chiruto Tobacco Vanille has done. It has, at minimum, slowed down the desire to get tobacco vanilla, but I honestly don't think I'll ever get tobacco vanilla. I just can't see myself wanting to spend the money when this does such a good job, and it's also not a scent profile that I reach for all that often. So when I'm in the mood for it, I'll just go with this. That's what makes it impressive. It has pretty much eliminated my need and want to get tobacco vanilla. So good stuff. And that covers all 10 of the most imp some of the most impressive cheap Middle Eastern fragrances that I have in my collection. And We'll go ahead and chop it up a little bit longer. We'll go closer to the one and a half hour mark. We're at an hour and 17 minutes right now. So I'm not going to just stop the stream right after we do the last one. <clears throat> we're going to chat for a little bit longer. But what's some more for you guys? Let's let's talk about it. Hawass Tops Invictus Any Day. It's phenomenal. It absolutely is. Spirit of Dubai. Is there a perfume reviewer that has it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't watch 90% of people that review fragrances. I just watch my friends. And I haven't seen any of them talk about it, so I'm not sure. I have not smelled Noir de Noir, Adrian. I have not. Hawass is the truth. He is him. There you go. Someone called me the Boz, Boz the Hitman Heart on another stream earlier. I like it. I like it. That sounds like something Kevin, Kevin would say. Shout out to Kevin. That sounds like Kevin. Did Kevin say that? Pause the hitman hard. I like it. <clears throat> I'm yet to get it. Might add it soon. Compliments aren't everything. Agreed. But women love Hawass. I get so many compliments. It's also surprisingly good in the winter because it's so powerful. Spiciness comes out in the cold. I agree. I agree with that statement completely, Mark. Unfortunately, I ordered Hawass and received a fake. Damn, that's sorry to hear that. I then ordered a decant, got the real deal. Good fragrance. Not my favorite, but hopefully getting a replacement bottle soon. 4, 10, 4. Sorry, you got a fake. That sucks. <clears throat> Still trying to get my blue aquatic collections back up. I've got plenty for both of us. Trust me. Ross, can you recommend? Oh, so I did that already. Did that already. Don't forget to hit the like, folks. Make sure a mega frag head over a thousand bottles. I agree. And I have zero complaints. I mean, hey, if, if the value is there for you, the value is there for you. Again, it's all the value we individually put on these things, you know. Thanks, Ross. You're honestly one of, if not the best fragrance reviewer on YouTube, dude. Keep up the good work. I heard mixed reviews on longevity of Hawass. First of all, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you very much for the vote of confidence. Seriously, I, I do appreciate that quite a bit. I wouldn't see, sit here and say I'm the best of anything, but I'm okay. I, you know, um, I, I shoot you guys straight with my real thoughts no matter what. No matter what's on this channel, I'm telling you what I really think about it, whether it's a friend of mine's fragrance or something that was sent to me for free or something I bought. It's the opinion is going to be the same no matter the situation. So I appreciate the confidence, the vote of confidence and the compliment. I appreciate that seriously, but I've heard the mixed reviews as well. And it's, it's an osmium. 
they're going to talk about my juice color is different. There's different batch codes. It's been reformulated. Oh, I got this. I, I, you need to get that one. Pull off the cap and let it macerate. Wait three months. You're going to hear all that craziness. It's an osmia. I love when people get mad at me for saying that. And they're like, oh, stop blaming it on that. It's the truth. It's the truth. Go nose blind, especially something so synthetic. So chemically synthetic. Like it's nothing natural about this smell. Zero naturals in here. I'm confident in saying that without having to confirm. Sharp chemical smelling. Your nose is going to wear out to it. You know, your nose is going to wear out too quick. I go through it. And there's certain fragrances that have more naturals than that that do the same thing to me. So it's it's a variety of fragrance oils. But something that's synthetic, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's 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 an osmia. So I have a few different friends with different color juices, different batches from different years, and it, it's a beast for all of us. So everybody's situation is different. I get that. I don't, I thought 5WST. I don't know what you're trying to say, my man. Well, it's been a staple for many people's collection for years. Good reason it's a safe buy. It is pretty safe for the most part. There's always that chance that you're Justin Copeland and you'd be like, ah, boring. It's too strong and synthetic and the same. I don't like it. There's always that chance that you'll feel like Justin, which I knew that was going to be the case. I just, I stayed again. I knew he wasn't going to care for it. Again, he doesn't hate it. I just knew it wasn't going to be something he was going to reach for. Five Eastern. No, uh, most of the time, <clears throat> previously, prior to this week, it was always either three central or four. I mean, three central or four central, which would be five Eastern. On occasion, that would happen. I always try to do three central, which is four Eastern. That's usually my target. Now, moving forward, that is 100%. It's going to be this time, four days a week. Three central. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Occasional weekend streams, but those will be short notice when I do them. Whereas these, you can fully expect on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday every week at 3 p.m. Central, whether it's just me with no topic, just talking to you guys, or me with a guest, or even something like this where it's a topic and we're discussing, there's an agenda with certain fragrances. It's going to be one of those formats, but four days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 3 p.m. Central. That is the schedule moving forward. Thinking about getting Platinum Eagle East. Wonder if it's still relevant. It's as relevant as you want it to be. Nothing's irrelevant unless you deem it irrelevant. That's how you look at it. Every individual is different. Rubroca Intense. Noted. Noted. I might have to check that out. So I haven't watched yet. I know Samoa Joe is, is Sweet Tooth. I've been seeing the commercials. Like being an old twisted metal fan, I'm skeptical because I don't want to hate it. I want I don't want to watch and be like, ah, oh, they're not doing it justice. But the trailer looks enticing. And then Samoa Joe's sweet tooth. I think that's funny. And the little bit I've seen of Joe, you guys could carpool. And it's like it's I haven't sat down and watched it yet, but I, I do want to check it out. I'm just nervous that I'm gonna hate it. I don't think I'm gonna hate it, but I'm nervous that there's a chance because. Twisted Metal 2, I put in, I couldn't tell you how many hours I put in on Twisted Metal 2 as Sweet Tooth. Yeah, and Minion. Use the code and use Minion. But, but Twisted Metal 2 years and years ago. I don't think about relevance. Hey, Ross, any recommendations from Armand Jane? Montebacco Verano. Beautiful citrus woods and leather. It's a gorgeous, powerful niche blue that still has some synthetics. A lot of Icewee Super. But it's phenomenal. Tobacco, leather, woods, citruses, there's a lot going on. Hyper versatile, masculine, just beautiful. I only have two fragrances from them. I have a Xandria, which smells like Alexandria too, supposedly. That's it's phenomenal. And then I have Montebacco Verano. And Montebacco Verano is magnificent. Magnificent. Niche blue done right. Great performer, too. Super versatile, but great performer. Hawassa, 9 p.m., going to a concert. Go at 9 p.m. Well, depends. Is it hot outside? I'm assuming you're going to be indoors, though, because most concerts are indoors. If you're indoors, go at 9 p.m. If you're outdoors, go at Hawass. That's that's what I – my two cents that I'm throwing in, if you care. <laughs> you know, do whatever you want. But my thought, if it's indoor, go at 9 p.m. If it's outdoor, go with Hawass. 
Yeah, it's phenomenal. Jeremy's in the house. Speaking of Dedrick's stream from last night, so yes, sir, we in this thing. So this this topic it was inspired because of our conversation yesterday on Dedrick's channel. Any of you not subscribed to Jeremy's channel, House of Colossus, make sure you guys do so. Let me put the link in the chat for you guys real quick. I got a lot of windows open. It's taking a second. There we go. I was worried I'd have to type the entire name out. So there we go. House of Colossus. Here we go. Copy. And in the chat. So guys, there is the link to Jeremy's channel. Go check him out. Great, great content creator. Had some great insight when we were talking. We were talking Middle Eastern clones last night. So that's what sparked this conversation in the first place. Was I wanted to kind of piggyback off of some of the talking points from last night. Divine Asylum. That's what it is. That's the Fragrance World clone. The other Fragrance World clone of Elysium. I'm gonna get it eventually. I saw they have a uh, Amber Oud clone as well. Divine Oud. I'd like to try that one because Amber Oud from Raj Parfums. That's like a Mount Rushmore kind of fragrance. That's my favorite Oud Rose fragrance I've ever smelled. So I have high regard for that. So I'd like to see what Fragrance World did with their clone on it. Ajmal Emote Evoke Gold. I've never tried anything from them. Zoha Aroma. Insolent Oud's another good Ombre Nomad alternative. Noted. See, I've never tried any of the others. I've only tried Ombre Nomad and Lord Despar Ombre. So I've only tried the original and Paris Corners version. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, who do you think may wind up on Jey Uso's side after the storyline with his brother? I didn't say. I thought that was lazy booking to have Jimmy be the one. That's lazy booking. I, I don't think they should have ever broke up the Usos personally. I think that's one of the few tag teams in history that should have never had a breakup. But we'll see where it goes. But I think that's lazy booking. I think the better booking, which I was talking to myself, calling for. Because there's always an interference in a pay-per-view match, especially one of the big four, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, stuff like that. When it comes to Roman's matches, I thought The Rock's daughter would have been the nice one to pull in there because that's how you – because Hollywood's on strike. Dwayne Johnson has no excuse for not getting involved in the storyline at this point. Okay? I understand it needs to be Cody and Roman at WrestleMania, but for the time being leading into, like, say, Survivor Series. I mean – how much more over can you put Roman's character other than if he was to beat The Rock? Because if Cody's going to take the title at WrestleMania, The Rock can't take the belt from Roman. So you could have an interesting story that could go across two months, though, to where he's pissed that his daughter got involved and she's being brainwashed and I'm the real head of the family. That's what I would have liked to have seen, but it's fantasy booking on my end. Next thing you know, sure enough, somebody pulls his leg. I knew when he hit the splash, somebody's about to pull him out the ring. And I was hoping it would have been The Rock's daughter because she's doing some random bullshit on NXT and some useless faction. That could have been her way to work into the main story because she's in the blood, she's in the family. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. That was, like I said, fantasy booking, wishful thinking on my end because it would have been the most seamless way to force the rock into the storyline because it's like okay now i have to get involved like that would be the thing now you brought my daughter into it now i have to get involved i've had enough i've let this charade go on for a long time i'm the head who told you you're the head of the table and it, that's what it could be that's what the story could be but you know triple h and bruce pritchard aren't reaching out to me for ideas I'd love to be on the writing team, but I'm sure all of us fans would love to be on the writing team, right? <clears throat> so there you go. There's my thoughts. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense. Excellent choice. My Siage, after it sit for a month, my smell real close. Colossus, hey, bruh. I meant to say try Rubroca Pride Intense. Gus with another 499 Super Chat. I appreciate you, sir. Does Oud Mineral have a sulfur egg hint to it? I keep reading it on sites. I want to grab it, but not trying to smell like an egg. I don't get that. I get dry wood, watery dry wood, like rotten wood, not rotten egg. It's very unique. It's <clears throat> so my wife's going to have events and flanker and flankers um, and banquets. I meant to say that she's going to be going to. I'm kind of saving that and bought that specifically for stuff like that to have this aquatic feel because we're at the beach. But more interesting dressy but aquatic 
So that's literally why I bought that 30 ml of Oud Mineral. And just to give you guys insight on why I even have it in the first place, it's not something that I'm going to wear all the time. That's why 30 ml was plenty. I may never go through 30 ml. But I've never, I didn't, I haven't seen that on the internet, but I also didn't read a lot of things about it. This is the first I'm hearing of it. I have watched opinions on it. Chris from Fragmental, Justin, and, and neither of them had said anything about that. And then, because they were the opinions I sought after, because I knew it was a little bit of a challenging fragrance. So then I got it, and it's like, mm. he, reading this, I've never heard this. Now, some of the blue fragrances with the amberwood and stuff like that, I've heard that from like light blue intense, Bulgari Aqua, Aqua Atlantique, stuff like that I've heard of the rotten egg thing, but not Oud Mineral. I, I haven't experienced that. And it's not something you can just get a decant of because it's discontinued now. Not just the private blend version, but the re-release version is discontinued too. So it's a bold blind buy. Just know that it is. I, I knew I was being bold. So, but I also see I, I went and seeked out two opinions that I really very much value that I knew had experience on the fragrance before I made my move. So I don't know if you've ever watched Chris from Fragmentals discussion on it or Justin Copeland's discussion on it. But if you trust them and me, none of us have said that. So I'm not saying you won't get that, but there's always that risk. If it's happened to somebody, apparently it's a thing. But know that myself and the other two opinions I value greatly when it came to me blind buying it, it was never said. But I appreciate the 49 Super Chat, but blind buy at your own risk, sir. Blind buy at your own risk. Love the joy. I love Joy. He's an OG, but I think you're going to beat him to 100K. I hope not. Joy deserves to hit 100K. I hated that I passed Justin up. I want Justin. I wanted Justin to get to it before me. That's my guy. You know, Justin's been around a few years longer than me. Joy's been around a few years longer than me. I wish both of them would hit 100K before I do. I'm not saying I will. I mean, I'm, I'm pacing well, but I would love to see that for them because that's again Joy. I value joy's opinion i've bought many fragrances off his recommendation I haven't talked to him in a little while shout out to joy um joy amin for any of you that don't know who i'm referencing wonderful wonderful human he's been around for like seven or eight years now something like that maybe a little longer if it's me the ones i recommend the most is Body Out Oud Sublime, Camaro Ohm Intense, and Cadlage Perfumes Shiaka. So this is supposedly a K.I.L.E. clone. I've never smelled the original, but it's fruit punch and rose, basically, like Dedrick said. It's pretty spot on. This is Reflection Man, almost one-to-one -one exact. Almost. And then this is Vintage Dior Homme 2007 formula. Waxy iris, not super sweet, woodsy, musky. Phenomenal. That's the three I would recommend. If it's me buying them over again, that's the three I'm going for first. <clears throat> Best for sure, I said it. Last, not last, still just smells better. It smells freaking good. <clears throat> Let's see. Thank you for replying to us. Well, I try to get to as much as I can. I know I'm getting behind by doing so, and I, I hate when I have to skip. It's always I always apologize to you guys if I'm going to have to skip ahead because it sucks. Because when you guys come to my live stream, you've gotten accustomed to me just chatting with you guys, and, and some of you get a little frustrated if I skip your comment. I've seen some frustration, and I apologize when it happens. Just I have to from time to time because I get so far behind. So we're at an hour and 34 minutes. We're going to shut it down here in just a bit. Let me try to get closer. Shout out to Darian. That's my guy. I need to do something with Darian. I, we random messages over the years here and there, but never had a real conversation with, but I've always liked Darian. Darian's fly. Fly guys. That's what I'm saying. Darian's fly. We're in a group chat together. That's when we, you know, it's me, Justin, EQ, Kuba. Who else is in the group chat? Darian, obviously. Buck. Buck's in the chat, too. So we, we got a little group chat going on IG. And uh, that's the main place that we exchange messages here and there. But I've never, like, done anything on camera with it. One of these days, Darian, if you happen to see this, which I doubt, um, I need to throw it in the group. Like, guys, we need to do something. I had Buck on the channel. I've had EQ in a ton of times. I've been back and forth with him and Justin. Um, 
privately, I've done. I've had a lot of conversations with Angel Kuba. No, we just never really done anything on camera. I need to do something with Angel too. One of these days, it's gonna happen though. That's all my guys. But Darian, we need to do something soon. Okay, I love Chiruto. Only thing missing is the bit of the depth. We, I mean, that's it's missing that something, that little something extra that I was talking about. The clones are usually missing. It's it's missing that little something. <clears throat> Doesn't have, but it's really close in the air. I agree. Uh, potentially, potentially. <clears throat> Good to see Josh. What should I purchase next? I mean, I don't know. What you in the mood for? I purchase stuff all the time. I literally did a haul video today. Vintage green is phenomenal. Talking good about it. Yeah, temper your expectations and performance. Um, but it's pedigree green citrus. So fresh green without spice. So fresh green herbal and woody, very it's it's like springtime. It's a springtime fragrance in a bottle. That's most of the time when you see people talk about it, it's going to be revolving around spring weather because it's ideal for it. It's a very green fragrance. I have Sublime too. It's excellent stuff. Synthetic, natural, raw, real batches, reforms. Does not matter to me as long as I love the smell. Hey, that's the most simplistic way to look at it, and that's the right way to look at it, John Carlo. New. Top 10 men's fragrances your wife has jacked. So she hasn't stolen a lot, but there's certain ones that she she sprays, but they're not men's fragrance. Well, there's only one that she sprays that's straight up marketed. It's literally Mercedes-Benz Man. It smells like fierce. Right there, that black bottle right there. She likes spraying that on herself. She just loves fierce. Um, on me, on her, it doesn't matter. She loves fierce. But like Orient Express, where's it at? Right there. It's literally in the front. I put it in the front because she grabs it and sprays it all the time. From Le Fleur's the Golf, that is great. Lychee, green, woody, phenomenal. It does lean a little feminine because there's a lot of lychee. A lot of lychee here. But she loves that one. She hasn't stolen the bottle, but she sure sprays it a lot. You know, So she hasn't really stolen bottles. <clears throat> Let's see. Bought Kate Alpha Sam per your recommendation. No brainer for the price. I agree. It smells way more expensive than the price. I also agree. I feel like it would layer well with other fragrances. That is what seems to be the case for a lot of people, from what I see. I just don't layer. I think it's fine as a standalone, but I've seen a lot of people say it does. I'm not sure with what. Need the experience with it. Spencer with the Bob Dollar Super Chat. Next time you're at Ross, check out Jones, New York, Gardenia, and Oud. Should be like 15 bucks. Fire. Trust me. Women's section. Winter fragrance. Mental note, Spencer. Mental note. I appreciate the super chat. Binged it all this past weekend. Also, what do you think about Nakamura's heel turn? So they need to do something with Shinsuke. It's clear that he's not dropping the belt to Shin, but he needs something. Because, like, the only way, like, they keep teasing this renewed rivalry with him and Cody. But the only, like, the only way that booking makes sense based on the long-term goal for Cody because Cody's made it clear publicly he doesn't want the world heavyweight title. He wants Roman's title because it's the WWE championship. It's not the new secondary belt. So they can have that, and they can go into having a great match where Cody's got him beat, and then Damian Priest cashes in and takes the title. That's the only way the booking makes sense to me because you still have to preserve Cody's long-term story for next WrestleMania. So you can, you can have that revisited, because it's funny how Seth came out when he said, I feel like I can beat anyone in the world. And if it were me, because Cody goes off script and says whatever the hell he wants all the time, I would have said, do you, Seth, do you need me to beat you again and take your title from you? Because like he's 3-0 and against Seth since he came back. So it's like, why are you coming out here to challenge me? Do you want to lose your title? Like that's kind of that confidence that he should spit out, a little bit of ego. That's the, But he didn't really get a chance to say much because – gets interrupted just like Brock interrupted last time he came out to it. So they're going to do that as filler. And I think when you see Cody versus Seth happen in the next few months, it's going to be when Damien smart money, I think anyways, is going to be when Damien priest cashes in money in the bank and Damien priest is going to take the title because they're really loving this judgment day faction with the booking. So Shinsuke is just filler is the moral of this story. He's filler, but it's going to make for a great match because Shinsuke doesn't really get to shine the way he should. Shinsuke is a legend from Japan, and he was not booked as such for most of his run here in WWE. 
So I think him and Seth will put on a phenomenal match. <clears throat> so let's skip ahead because we're going to go ahead and shut this down while I'm way behind. So let's see. Skip, skip. I apologize, guys. I, I got to skip because we've ran way over, 40 minutes longer than I normally do. I don't want to push this to two hours. My pleasure, Jeremy. I hope I hope some of my viewers make their way over to your channel. And, it, guys, if you like what you see, turn that red button gray and put a slash through that bell. That means subscribe and turn on all notifications. Check out his content. If you like what you see, subscribe to him. So, yeah, I'm way behind, way, way behind. Yeah, for real, right? I have not. Yeah, it's indoors, warm and humid Toronto. Go at 9 p.m. I wore Hawa Saturday Toronto Carnival. That makes sense. And it was a beast. Got mad confidence. So there you go. You got it figured out. You didn't need my help. I'm just I'm just kind of uh, backing up your decision that you were already making. It's kind of like I'm agreeing with what you were going to do anyway, basically. So sometimes you just want people to kind of drive it home for you, what you were already thinking. And I think that's what would have happened here. All right. So we actually got to the bottom. I'll be damned. Strong sense of smell, but knowledge of certain notes is lacking. What's the best? So just continue to sniff and smell. Uh, getting your nose on raw materials, uh, like individual oils, is a good way to do it. Now, that doesn't teach you how certain accords are created when this lavender is blended with this wood. and so You know what I mean? That's through smelling all these different blends. Thousands, I've smelled thousands and thousands of fragrances at this point. Even though I have over a thousand, I've smelled multiple thousands of fragrances. And I'm nowhere, I am no aficionado. That's why I call myself an enthusiast because I am a I'm an enthusiast. I'm just really into this. And I've got a lot of experience. I'm just I'm not some expert. I've never claimed to be. I never will be. I'll never, as long as I live, be a fragrance expert. That's bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not a trained in perfumery. This is all just self-taught seasoning of the nose, trying different things. So some things are easier to pick up than others. It's just one of those things where it's repetition. It's just constantly smelling and not everybody's nose is capable of it. Some it's easier for, some it's more difficult, some never get it, some take more time to get it. It's just one of those things, repetition, just reps, practice makes perfect kind of thing. But in this case, practice will never make perfect, but it can enhance things for you. So that's kind of how you have to look at it. Noel, good to see you. I'm going to go have a nice day. Viram, good to see you. Kevin, my pleasure. I love Assad too. As do I, sir. It's good stuff. Florida man. Ross, any experience with... No. Tobacco flirting with vanilla. I like the name of that. But no, I have no experience with it. Already subbed to him. Well, there you go. New Cali Santal wedding special smells really good. They have two of them. Yeah, the men's and the women's. I haven't tried them. A little late. So we're actually shutting it down, Noel, because it I went way longer. Like the replay on this, I was about to complain and say it's gonna be hard to get replay value, but bullshit. Because me and two of me and Justin's live streams on this channel, I've got almost 260,000 views between the two, and they're both over two hours. So I need to stop with that. You know, it's gonna hurt the replay value. No, it won't. If there's interest, there's interest. Because it's crazy. Like the one me and Justin did from two months ago passed up the one that was my number one video, passed it up by like 12,000, 13,000 views at this point in two months versus a year and a half, almost a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. It's crazy, the fire that video caught. Unbelievable. Two most viewed live streams in the fragrance community, me and Justin. It's crazy. It's crazy. Thankful. It's just it's wild. But yeah, so I point is I need to stop saying that, that oh, if it's, you know, going on two hours it's gonna hurt the replay value because that's bullshit that's not true that's not true at all one with me eq and george has 60 something thousand views and it's almost three hours long the watch time average watch time on it's like 58 minutes people are watching it for almost an hour on average it's a lot of watch time <clears throat> so ood mineral 50 ml for a thousand on ebay yeah mm -mm. no you're not gonna find it for you're not the reason I got a 30 ml and was cool with it because I told you guys the situation a few minutes ago that I was it's not going to be often I wear it anyway. It's super situational, but I wanted to get a 50 ml, but the 50 mls were like six and seven hundred bucks. And I was like, mm. the private blend and the re release because I have the 30 ml of the re release 
because the bottles are a little different and the labels are a little different from the original private blend to the re-release in the private blend. Excuse me. So, man, best of luck to you. Let me pull it up on eBay real quick. I'm just curious because I bought mine on eBay. I'm just curious what they're going for. Tom Ford Oud Mineral. Wow. 100 ml discontinued for 800. 100 ml discontinued for 244. No, that's Oud Wood. Why'd it come up under Oud Mineral? That's weird. <clears throat> just curious. So 50 ml, $700. 50 ml, 219. Coming from Canada, $24 shipping sealed. Oud Mineral, 30 ml. Says brand new, but it's. For 122 that's about what I paid. Let me check out the seller, though. If it'll load, come on. It doesn't want to load. I think I have too many windows open. During the day, I have terrible connection speeds for some reason. Oh, so it, it gave me an error. Let me try again. There we go. Popped up. Seller's got an 800, 799 rating with 100% positive feedback, so I'm sure they're not selling a fake. So they have a 30 ml sealed. <clears throat> MOHC8407 is the seller. They're out of Indianapolis. 122 with $8 shipping, so 130 bucks before tax. That's about what I paid. And they, they're legit. They're legit. So there's, there's one 30 ml out there that's cheap. You got one for $150 with $24 from Canada. I didn't check that seller out. There's options. You're going to pay your ass off for these 50 mLs, but if you're okay with a 30 mL, you can get it. You can get it. <clears throat> Think of Nadja. I, I've only smelled it one time. One time uh, Joe sprayed it on me, Joe Roman, when I lived in Colorado Springs. It's been a year since that happened. So I don't really I remember it kind of smelled like Invictus Aqua, but more woody. Things got oud, synthetic oud. So. Well, I appreciate that, Joseph. God bless you as well, my friend. So we're about to shut it down. Burnt Hair by Boring Company goes up to $600,000. What the? Oh, wow. Burnt Hair must be another Elon joke on consumers. <laughs> Very well could be. Last one, is Nordstrom a good place to buy fragrances online? For full retail, yes, because Nordstrom's legit. It's a retailer. But... I would always check the discounters, see if you can get it for a better deal. I'm not sure what fragrances you're looking for, but Nordstrom is legit. It's legit as it comes. And on that note, we'll go ahead and shut it down. We're hour 48 minutes in. Uh, we, we pretty much took care of the first 10, the 10 fragrances, the topic in the first hour. But I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you for the great conversation. Make sure to subscribe to Jeremy's channel, House of Colossus, if you like what you see with his content. Link is in the chat. Actually, real quick, I'll, I'll throw it back in the chat for anybody just joining. There we go. <clears throat> and I appreciate everybody that gave super chats. Uh, channel members, go vote for what fragrance we're going to buy right now. Paco Rabanne, 1 million royal. 100 ml is winning for the $10 tier. And what was winning? Oh, 125 ml of Parfums de Mother Percival is kind of clearly winning for the niche tier, for $25 and above tier. So make sure to go vote if you want something other than those. If you want a chance at something other than those. But uh, make sure to check out today's haul video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Y'all have a great day, guys.